All right, guys. In this little video here, we are going to analyze a few NMR spectrums and making sure that we follow the rules to get you credit on any quizzes, exams, things like that. So ultimately, you need to prove your work, right? Can't have just a random structure drawn on there without being able to tell the story of how that kind of came about to be. So make sure that you do A, calculate your degrees of unsaturation if you're given the molecular formula. In lab you are, in lecture you won't be. B, you've got to label every signal. What is it? A singlet, a doublet, a multiplet? And what does that mean, right? So does this signal say I have two equivalent neighbors, three equivalent neighbors, what does it mean? Um, and then finally, next to each signal, label the chemical shift, what it could possibly mean. Like, oh, around 11 ppm, that's typically the hydrogen signal of a carboxylic acid. Or, oh gosh, in this 2, 2.2 parts per million region, this is hydrogens that are adjacent to a C double bond O, a carbonyl bond. So these are those characteristic chemical shifts that you're supposed to be memorizing from your sheet in lecture also have the same sheet in your lab manual. So let's start analyzing. Alrighty, so if you look at this first one right here, they gave us the molecular formula. We're only working with three carbons. That's not too bad at all. So we're going to calculate our degrees of unsaturation that we did last semester. So remember, you need to compare the number of carbons here, so that's three, to a saturated alkane with three carbons. And an alkane has two in plus two hydrogens. So if we were to calculate our degrees of unsaturation, an alkane would have, so two times three is six plus two, would have eight hydrogens, minus how many hydrogens we have in our formula, which is six. And then we divide that by two. So we have one degree. So remember, one degree can mean um, a cycloalkane, kind of difficult, with three carbons. That wouldn't be very stable. Um, or a double bond, perhaps. Right? So this could be a ring, a double bond. Okay. So also, if you notice, um, we do have two oxygens in here, so we kind of want to think about what functional groups might have two oxygens in them. Okay. So we've got a couple. Um, we have esters and we also have carboxylic acid. So our ester functional group looks like this. And then we also have a carboxylic acid that looks like this. And they both have a carbonyl bond, and they both are going to have some sort of group of hydrogens adjacent to a carbonyl bond. So any hydrogens that pop up here would typically be around that 2, 2.2 region, which is right here. Okay. Um, now the main difference is, is the hydrogen of a carboxylic acid, right? So that would be really, really downfield. Okay. Um, and that is a characteristic stretch that we're looking for. Okay, so just in general, again, this region should be right around 2, I don't know, maybe 2.2 ppms for hydrogens giving this signal. Okay, same thing right here. But a big difference here is the hydrogen of a carboxylic acid, that signal would be right around 11 to 12 ppms. Which if you are taking a peek at your spectrum, we do have that right away. So we can see that right there. That is this guy right here. <coughs> so right away we can rule out then our ester. <coughs> and we know that we're working with a carboxylic acid. Now we have to put the rest of the pieces together. So following our directions, <coughs> We need to label what these are. So this right here is a singlet. Okay. So a singlet means that the hydrogen or hydrogens giving this signal, and we know it is only one, has zero 
equivalent hydrogen neighbor. So if we look at the atom that's adjacent to the oxygen, there's carbon. There's no hydrogens on here. So that hydrogen does not have any neighbors. Okay, and remember that's my abbreviation for equivalent neighbors. Okay. Now, shifting over here upfield, when we're looking at these real time spectra, okay, you've got to count the little skinny lines that are being drawn up to get your splitting pattern. Now, you have your copy at home, so you can kind of zoom in. Let me lift this up a little bit. So you can see more bolder lines that are there, and then the computer extends those lines up to make it for easier counting, okay? So that's what you need to count there. Okay. So <clears throat> looking at this one right here, I see one, two, three, four skinny lines. This is called a quartet, okay? So a quartet means that we have three equivalent neighbors. So the hydrogens that are in this region, which again is our carbonyl region, so the hydrogens that are adjacent to a carbonyl, they should have three equivalent neighbors. Okay? And then right here, if we count our lines, we have one, two, three. This is a triplet. That means the hydrogens that are giving this signal, they have or has um, two equivalent neighbors. And this is sort of, again, right around one, this is our more upfield alkyl area. So things that are further away from the electronegative atoms. <clears throat> and then of course, labeling our chemical shift here, which we already talked about in the beginning. This is again, our carboxylic acid hydrogen, very de-shielded and exposed to that NMR magnet because of those two electronegative oxygens there. Okay. Now we're again, we're only, if you look at your molecular formula, only dealing with three carbons. So you already know that our downfield hydrogen at 11 ppm is this guy that has no neighbors. We only have two more carbons. The only way that we could attach them would be a CH2 and a CH3. Okay. Now if we go back and label these guys right here, they should be around 2 ppm's because they are adjacent to the carbonyl bond, okay? And they in fact have, if we count how many neighbors, we look over here, they have three equivalent neighbors, which corresponds to that quartet that we are indeed seeing right here. So that matches, or checking our work right now, which is kind of nice. And then finally, if we look at these guys right here and double checking them, they are the furthest away from our electronegative oxygens in the carboxylic acid. And they should again be in that one-ish region, which we do have a signal in that one-ish region. Okay. And these guys have two equivalent neighbors. So these hydrogens have two equivalent neighbors. So that's giving us the triplet because that N plus one rule we talked about, two plus one is three, that's giving a triplet. And of course, all of our splitting patterns, this was a singlet, our singlet at 11, our quartet at two, and our triplet at one, Everything matches from splitting pattern to chemical shifts. Sometimes students get so focused just on the splitting pattern that they forget to check um, the chemical shifts. So stay tuned for another video and after I get my voice back and we will keep analyzing some more. Okay, bye-bye.